Alright guys, welcome back to the Dark Souls 3 walkthrough, Indiana Jones style. Now we're going back to Ann Arlando because there's an Estes Shard that we missed, so we're going to go ahead and go back and get it. Now if you're going for the Dark Moon Blade Covenant, you're going to need 30 of the Proof of Concord kept, and they only come from these enemies here as drops. And you'll be farming this area for hours and hours on end, I think when I did it, it took over 8 hours of farming to get 30 of them. And this is with the highest item discovery. But luckily here, we get one. So this is what you're looking for. Proof of Concord kept. You'll just need 29 more to get the Dark Moon Blade Covenant rewards. Now, the item that we missed, we just went to um, kill the boss. And we didn't even bother to look to the left here. But we were too preoccupied with killing the the enemy that dropped this, the ruby. So, yeah, I didn't want to mess that up. But there it is right there in the chest. And we're going to go back to Firelink. Now, in the last episode, we did get Avalon. And we're going to use it a little bit in this episode. But it, it isn't going to be useful for every situation. And we're going to get our Cestus, our Blessed Cestus to plus 10. We have two slabs that we're going to use. And we're going to use them now. So I recommend doing the Blessed Cestus because it's going to take us to an S scale ranking, which is amazing. And it's also going to increase our health regen, and we'll get Avalon to plus 10. And that's going to be it for now. Make sure you get your Estus upgraded because uh, it's so easy to forget sometimes. And we'll hit the Firekeeper on the way out to upgrade our Faith. We're still working on Faith. Faith is the best stat to level right now for us because it's going to make all of our weapons better. As you can see, the scaling right there for the Cestus is now four points per level, which is amazing. The five points on the second one there, amazing. So we're going to get the maximum scaling now with our Blessed uh, Cestus. But plus, our whip is going to scale with it, and so is our Bandit Knife. So it's just going to benefit us more. We're going to be using the Fire Clutch Ring and the Dark Clutch Ring whenever we use certain weapons. Like if we're using the frayed blade, we're going to use the dark clutch ring. If we're using the fire weapons, we're going to use the fire clutch ring. So those are going to be frequently used rings. Also, don't forget to burn your undead bone shard at the bonfire, the one we got from Ladder Gilligan. Now, it's important to note that I put on the prisoner's chain because I'm not able to wield Avalon in my inventory with everything else without fat rolling. So with the prisoner's chain on, we can... So that's whenever I need to use Avalon, I'm going to have that ring equipped if I want everything else equipped. And here we're just going to use that shortcut that we opened up in order to get to Arch Dragon Peak, which is where the Nameless King is. Now, we're not going to kill the Nameless King in this episode. That's going to be the next episode. We just got too much more to do in this episode. The next episode, which will be the final episode, will be the remaining three bosses, which is the Nameless King, the Twin Princes, and the Soul of Cinder. And we're going to mop up some items that we missed that are particularly interesting, in my opinion. And some ashes that we missed, too. I want to make sure I get all the ashes. And we're going to mop up some side quests for the NPCs as well. Like, we didn't do Arena side quests, so we're going to do that as well in the next episode. It won't take long, though. And I'll throw in a few farming spots to grind for the Covenant items, which I already showed you how to get the Proof of Concord kept, so we're not going to do that one again. But the remaining ones that you need for achievements... Which, this isn't an achievement guide, but if you're going for the achievements, you'll definitely need to get these Covenant items in order to get 100%. So I'm going to show you the easiest way I've found to farm for those. So a somewhat cryptic way of entering this hidden area, you have to use the Path of the Dragon Jester that we got after killing Osiris. It's just a very cryptic, and we have to use this again later on to get a specific item so we can complete Hawkward's quest. Now here... The Frayed Blade is going to be your best friend for these uh, Mayan Serpents. They are quite a pain in the ass, especially the ones that are having the dual wielding bandit knives or whatever. They're a pain in the ass. But if you use the Frayed Blade's R1 special, it will take them out in one hit, usually. And this is the one I hate the most. This guy has a terrible frontal attack. He will just cause bleed on you very quickly. But as you see, the Frayed Blade's attack projectile attack will make short work of them. Now up here, the game is trying to tell you something by giving you a lightning gem, saying, well, maybe you should invest in lightning because there's dragons in this area, and 
You might want to invest in it, but we don't really need it. We're not going to kill the Wyvern because it, it, it's not going to really benefit us. It has some good upgrade materials. Now right here, I like to kill the guy on the right first. Let the guy... The guys that shoot projectiles are just going to pretty much shoot projectiles. But the ones that want to come in and with melee, we're going to go in with melee. So you want to take out the, the guys with melee first and the projectiles can be a set afterthought. Like this guy right here. We're just going to take this guy out first. And you can use the pillar for protection. And here is a, I believe it's a, oh, a Titanite uh, chunk we missed right here. Now, I did farm for some Titanite chunks at the beginning of the episode. I didn't have enough uh, to get my Avalon up to plus 10, but I did it off camera. So that's how I was able to upgrade it initially at the beginning of the video. Now, we're not going to sit at this bonfire yet. Because we're at full health, so we don't really need to. Now, stick to the left here, and we'll get a chunk. And we're also going to get the lightning clutch ring, which I believe is the last of the clutch rings to get. And by going this way, we'll also bypass a couple of large enemies that we don't really want to fight. Uh, the man serpent, the giant ones with the, with the big axe, they're quite a pain in the ass too. They cause a buttload of damage. And they have this charging attack that is just, it will knock your ass backwards. Alright, so we got the lightning clutch ring. So now we have a boss coming up. It's not really much of a boss. It's, the, the, the challenge of this boss is just knowing how to kill it. I mean, it's really, the game kind of confuses you by like, oh, there's a dragon here. You got to fight it. Well, you don't really do that. That's the key. It's another gimmick boss, just like Yorm was, where you, you just can't, cause damage normally you have to do it a specific way so just run forward I don't recommend picking up any shinies the game's trying to distract you you're just gonna run past the wyvern and go left that 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 shiny if you try to pick it up you're gonna get hit so don't worry about it there's gonna be a, a number of man serpents along the way and you just dodge them run past them you'll you'll take some hits but it's okay you're just trying to get to a specific ladder so you can kill the wyvern and that's it. So we're just going to go this way. You're going to hang a right here. There's going to be some man serpents that are going to fall from above. Right when you get here, just ignore them and keep going. You're just going to go along this bridge. Now, this guy's got a long range attack with his chain. Just try to dodge it as best as you can. It's really just running and get past all these enemies to this ladder right here. Try to lure this guy away from the ladder so he doesn't hit you on the way up. But once you get to the top of the ladder, you're pretty much home free. You can still die from the boss by missing your jump, which I have done. Now there is a shiny here. We're going to go ahead and pick it up because we don't want to come back for it. It's just some twinkling titanite. But we're going to get transported after the boss fight, so we're not going to be able to really come back and get it unless we go out of our way. So. so the key to this fight is just waiting until he raises his head up and, and spews fire. Once he puts his head down, that's when you drop off. Don't drop off until he puts his head down. About right there. Just walk off. I'm not even running. I'm just dropping off. Do a plunge attack, and that's it. As soon as you hit the ground, switch to your... Silver Serpent Ring to reap some more benefit from the souls. And you'll get the Dragon Headstone. Now we had the Dragon Torso Stone already. And this kind of completes the regular set. But there's an upgraded set we'll get later. And that's when we can complete Hawkward's Quest. Because he has the Dragon Twinkling Dragon Head. And he wants the Torso. And he's going to fight us to the death for it. So we're going to sit at this bonfire... There's no enemies to respawn yet. And we're going to change our ring setup here. We'll be doing this quite often. So we're going to fight an NPC. Now it's random which NPC you get. There's a necromancer of sorts up top which will spawn in enemies. Now we're going to use the slumbering dragon crest ring and the hornet ring to get a little extra bonus damage. Now we want to circle around here and take out the necromancer first. She'll be shooting these bleed orbs at you. 
they're very easy to dodge just one shot from the projectile will take her out now it's random whether you get a Drake Blood Knight or you might get which is the rarer of the you know NPCs is the um, Havel the Rock but you're gonna fight him anyway later but the only way to get his armor is to fight him here now as you can see with the slumbering dragon crest ring we're able to get right behind him and he doesn't even know we're here we're able to get some cheap shots on him and he's dead before he knows what even happened so yeah I like to backstab and then follow up with the witch's locks R1's very effective now we're gonna keep the same ring set up for the next uh, encounters but right here let's go ahead and open up a little mini shortcut we're not really gonna use it but here it is just get off the elevator that's at the beginning of the area Now, Witch's Lock's out, double hand it, and we're going to take out the guy on the left first. He's hidden in this little alcove. You can't get too close because his head will come out like a giraffe and hit you. But two shots will take him out. Now, get Bandit Knife out, and we can just gingerly walk up to this guy. He doesn't even know we're here because of the Slumbering Dragon Crest ring. I really like this ring. It's, it's one of the best rings in the game, in my opinion. It makes a lot of areas easier. Wish we could have had this in the... Ashes of Ariandel DLC. We're just going to kick the shield out of the way and get this guy. You don't actually need the horse ring to kill, to, to knock away some of the shields. Now we're going to get Frayed Blade out and drop on this guy because it one shots him. You want to take this route for a couple reasons. One, you avoid a big dude, a big uh, man serpent. You'll see him right as climbing up this ladder right there in the distance right there. And you'll also get the lightning, the stone lightning plate ring which will be useful against the Nameless King. So we're definitely going to use that against the Nameless King right here, the Thunder Stone Plate Ring. Now the Wyvern is coming up and really we're just going to run past him. There are some strategies you can do to, to wither his health down, but it's just, we're not going to bother with it. It does give you some upgrade materials, but like I said, we're pretty much good with every upgrade material we have for our weapons. Now, here is a little squirrely crystal lizard. And there's some more scales in this chest. We're going to be upgrading a few boss weapons at the end of the episode, so we'll get some more of those. Now, I hate these next enemies, guys. These next enemies are pain in my ass. I hate these things. These things are stone lizards, and they love to knock you off of cliffs, so to avoid that we're just going to fight him in a controlled area we're going to lure him into this area I tried to use the witch's locks through the wall there but it didn't work for some reason but I found that actually the best weapons to take out these things are the cestus the dragon fist I mean the demon fist and your witch's locks the witch's locks do the most damage but it's slower than the other weapons I'm going to go ahead and use the cestus to finish him off The flurry of left bumper will take it out quick. But what they like to do, like I say, their main thing is knocking you off cliffs. They have this this roll attack that just, it seems to hone in on no matter where you are. It has great tracking. And that's a very annoying thing about this enemy. Is once it starts rolling, it's more than likely going to hit you no matter what. But they are weak to blunt attacks, like I said. So you use either hammers or whatever you got that's blunt attack. But we use our cestus for our build. Or the demon fist. Now, if you stand right here, you can. Sw we're going to switch our rings out. We want to make sure we have the stamina ring because we're going to be doing a lot of running here. And we're going to use the fire clutch ring because there's an NPC coming up, and we want to maximize our fire damage output. Now, you see, he kind of blocks me here, and I kind of panic. Run back because he's going to spew the area with fire. Now I've seen videos where people use the bow and arrow and stuff and just kind of cheese him. And it's just not worth my time. So I'm just going to run past him once I get an opportunity here. But I, I tried to tinker with it a little bit saying well maybe I can shoot him with Avalon. But the damage output is not great. And it's just not, like I said, it's not worth my time. I, you do get a lot of upgrade materials. You get a lot of scales and stuff like that and chunks I think. But like I said we're going to get the ashes pretty soon which will allow us to buy scales if we need them it's really not going to matter but if you want to kill him there are ways to kill him but I'm just not going to bother 
once you get an opportunity, we're just going to run past. He'll try to hit you with his tail going past him here. Now, you're going to have to deal with a lot of these stone lizards on the way up here, and there's just no way to dodge them. They're just, their tracking is too good on their rolls. Now, we're going to take out uh, another necromancer here. We're going to stand, well, before we do that, though, we're going to stand right here at the doorway. You don't get too close. We want a sniper from a distance. Now, she will summon before you can kill her. She's already summoned the NPC. But this NPC does not have any armor. And so it's going to be easy pickings for us. We're just going to kill him with the witch's locks. Double hand the witch's locks. It will stun him every hit. Another reason you want to have the stamina ring so you can keep wailing on him. Just don't get too close. He has a rapier, so... It's actually Ricard's rapier. But witch's locks, easy peasy. Now here is the Nameless King's uh, way to get to him right here. You'll have to ring that bell. We'll do that in the next episode. I just didn't have enough time to squeeze it in this one. When I hit this bonfire... Now this is a gauntlet of enemies, guys. These guys, there's these are the toughest enemies in the game, pretty much. And there's a lot of them. And we're going to deal with them accordingly, but the first thing I like to do is watch this guy. He's walking around... You can sometimes, it, I didn't do it right here, I got bad RNG here, but you can usually whip him through the wall, but it didn't work the way I wanted to. Usually if you one hand it, but he, he got wind of me and he came at, came at me, so I didn't get a chance to kill him, and it's the one I hate the most. You can use Avalon and back up as a good strategy. Don't don't try to whip him like I did because the wind up is, takes too long. Yeah, I recommend just shooting him from as you're backing up. Now for the second enemy, there's a guy that's going to be shooting projectiles at you. I like to use the second pillar for cover, and we can just snipe him. Alternatively, you can use your little uh, charge move there with the Avalon. I should have actually used that because he came at me. Usually he won't. Uh, he won't come at you, he'll just stay there and shoot at you, but you can use your charge attack, like I say. It's very effective at close range. I haven't tried it against the bandit wielding knife uh, man serpents, but I probably should have. But it's a nice little strategy you can use there. Now for Havel. Havel's guarding a Titanite slab and he's got the his weaponry and his shield. You can't get the armor unless you kill the other one that was being summoned by the necromancer but that's random now right here this stone lizard we can just knock off a la this is Sparta I don't even bother with with him just knock him off with the witch's locks very easy and now we're gonna get up these this ladder here and we're gonna switch our ring setup I like to get some like I said cheap shot in with the we're gonna get the slumbering dragon crest ring out and the Hornet Ring, and we want to make sure we have the Dark Clutch Ring equipped and the Farron Ring equipped. And the reason you want all this is because we're going to spam the special attack for the Frayed Blade to make Havel bleed faster. However, we don't have a large mana pool, so we have to use the ring to kind of get a more out of it. And we wasted a little bit with the charge with the Avalon, so... Right here, we're just going to backstab him. He doesn't know we're here because of the loveliness of the slumbering dragon crest ring. Now, I tried to follow up with the whip here, but it didn't work. Now, I'm really not sure about his his attack strings. When to go in, it's kind of random. So you'll see, sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. But the best thing to do is go in with the frayed blades, especially, like I say. Right here, I get three shots in, which is really good. I already made him bleed once. And he'll go into his, he'll cast a spell which makes him even more invulnerable with his stone self. He's already made a stone, so he he puts on a stone spell. So I don't even attack him in this phase. But we picked up the Titanite Slab there, which we will use afterwards. I think the best time to do it is when he does the, the really hard slam attack that he uses. The one that takes the longest for him to wield. 
I think that one right there, but I, I got hit, so I couldn't. There we go. Another three hits. And he's nearly dead now. But yeah, the timing on these is kind of awkward. Not really sure when it's safe. I think it's whenever he does the large one, like I said. When, he, when he's taking longer to swing, that's probably when it's the safest to go in. And we'll get the Dragon Tooth and the Great Havel Shield. Now for the gauntlet of enemies. This these, this is a lot of enemies, guys, and they are not easy to kill. Especially the ones that are large. The ones with that big axes and the guy that has like a morning star type thing. But they have a lot of little minions as well accompanying them, so it's just it's just a it's it's a gauntlet. You're gonna probably die here a few times. So we're gonna do prisoner's train again because we're gonna be using Avalon a little bit. But I found that going defense is probably the best bet here. So, Ring of Steel Protection. Give you a little few more hits, maybe. So, there's the first guy with the shield. He can be dealt with by either kicking the shield out of the way. Or just getting behind him for a backstab. But, you're on borrowed time here because the enemies are coming. It's like on a timer. They're already coming. So, I just want to get rid of this guy quickly. So, we're going to kick the shield. And here he comes. This is the big dude. The big dude with the axe. I recommend using Frayed Blade. And just try to dodge him. I mean, he, it's, it's not easy. He's got this one attack, like I say, knocks your ass back like that one. And so that puts you in behind the eight ball already. And if you got more enemies coming, and there's one right there, and it's one I hate the most. The dual wielding bandit knife. Like I say, Avalon for the win here. Avalon is probably the best crossbow if you have exploding bolts or bleeding bolts. Or so I call them. They're called splintering bolts, I think. But they're quite expensive and you don't even get them readily available until you get Grey Rat's Ashes to the Handmaiden. And you can only carry 30 exploding ones on you at a time so it's kind of a I really hate how they did the inventory in this game for the bolts now here's the morning star just try to get close to him hopefully he'll do his breath attack which will give you more opportunities to hit him but you definitely don't want to fight this one from a distance and he has that thing with his giraffe neck where he'll try to hit you from behind but yeah these guys do a buttload of damage We're still not done. We got more enemies coming. You you are probably thinking, what in the hell are they guarding? If it's so many enemies guarding this one area, there is that attack. If you get hit by that one, that charging attack, it'll knock you so far back. See how much damage that just does. And he, and then the sweeping hitboxes, man, they just like he hit me from behind there. Yeah, this is what you want. You want him to breathe fire, because then that's his, his, his end, usually. But it's still, the damage these guys do is unbelievable. So once he's dead, I believe that's the last guy. Now we're going to get the ashes, the dragon chaser ashes. This will allow us to buy the remaining upgrade materials that we don't really have readily available, which are the Titanite scales and Titanite chunks. They're expensive, but you can actually buy them at least. I like to use this rock for, you know, protection. I don't like to get a chance for this guy to knock me off because he will knock you off if you get too close. Which is locked for the win from a distance. Dragon Chaser's Ashes. Now, now we're going to go get the item. The item that will allow us to complete Hawkward's quest. The Twinkling Dragon Torso. Once you have the Twinkling Dragon Torso, we're going to go back to Firelink and talk to Andre and he'll tell us that Hawkward has acted weird or has changed or whatever and we can go to where we fought the Abyss Watchers to fight him to the death. So again, another cryptic thing, we have to use the Jester Path of the Dragon to get the Twinkling Dragon Torso and now we're going back to Firelink.
We'll use the slab while we're there. And while we're here, let's say goodbye to our friend Grey Rat because we're going to send him to his death by asking him to pillage the Lothric Castle. But you can see he's going to talk about Hawkward here and give you the sword grass. And we're going to go ahead and upgrade our raw Uchi Katana plus 9 to plus 10. This is the weapon that we started the game with. And there you're probably asking why I'm upgrading it. I'll tell you in a minute. Now, we're sending Grey Rat to his doom. He didn't want to sit here anyway. At least he'll die doing what he loved. Pillaging. Now, the advantage of having an Uchi Katana Raw plus 10 is that we can actually buff it. We can buff it with uh, various elements, but we couldn't do that before with the Chaos Blade and the Frayed Blade. You can't, you can't buff them. So, it, I wanted to have a Katana in my inventory which I could buff, so... Nice to have it. We're still working on Faith. And now we're going to go to the Abyss Watchers bonfire. And we're going to do a ring setup to kill Hawkward easily. The number one thing you want to make sure you have are the charms. The undead hunter charms because he's going to heal, I think, more times than you want to see. So we're going to make sure we get our fire clutch ring out too. We're going to be hitting him with the witch's lock. So we want to make sure we have maximum damage dealing. And we're also going to use, for the first time in this walkthrough, we're going to use the Karthus blood ring. The reason I'm using this one is because his hitboxes are kind of awkward. And they, they, they're, they're wide. And I want to make sure I have a little bit extra... Invincibility frames with the rolls. But yeah, he's just like the Abyss Watcher. He's got the same move set. Now make sure you throw a Hunter Charm before he even attacks. This will give you an advantage straight away and just start hitting him with the double handed R2s with the Witch's Locks. Now when you get an opportunity though, re apply your Hunter Charms because it doesn't last as long as you think. And he'll heal, uh, he'll heal like five times or something like ridiculous like that. And I don't want to deal with it, so good night. He became obsessed with becoming a dragon for some reason, a la Seath. So now you have the complete set of the dragon, the twinkling dragon set. Now that we have that, we're off to the archives. We're going to do quite a bit in the archives. We're going to get Grey Rat's Ashes. And we're going to open up a few shortcuts. And we're going to get a number of items. And especially we're going to get the... We're going to get two Titanite Slabs. Which we'll use on our remaining boss weaponry. The Rose of Ariandel, which is part of the Whip family. And we'll use it on the crossbow from Gale. The Brittle Crossbow. Now, I want to make sure I use my bandit knife in this area especially for this mini boss coming up and make sure you have the right eye of pontiff because it's going to make your life a lot easier now you're still going to be cursed with the books in the bookshelves and stuff like that so i am going to use the curse bite ring ev eventually but not right now we want to make sure we have the right eye of pontiff right now these guys can drop their candlesticks i'm always waiting for them to drop one it's a pretty cool weapon or you might get their robe. So you want to go up this ladder here. Very specific way of doing this. We're going to go up this ladder. Make sure you have the Arbalest. We're switching to the Arbalest so we don't have to fat roll and we can still use the rings we want. We're going to kill this guy here first and stop. Turn around and snipe the scholar that's walking by. As long as you hit him as he's on the stairs, he'll just stop and start shooting you, but he can't hit you. His wave of energy will dissipate before it gets to you, as you can see. I've tried this multiple times, and it, and it works. So, And also, we're going to snipe this guy from up top. Now, ideally, you want him to die. But, I did, unfortunately, I didn't get him to die. He gets knocked off the book's shelf, and I had to deal with him with a slither of health. And now, this guy will charge you. The other guy won't usually charge you right away, but this guy will. 
So Frayed Blade for the win. We're going to use the projectile attack again. These guys are not to mess with. They have that great sword attack and it's kind of hard to dodge. It has a long wind up. Like he just charges you forever and it's very annoying. And he'll throw fire bombs. The other one will. Really don't like these thralls. We got one more scholar to take out. We're going to take some damage from the uh, the, the hands because we don't have our head dipped in wax yet. There's an invisible wall right here. Now this guy is a pain in the ass. This is a outrider knight, but we want to kill him because we get the outrider set by killing this guy. The main main thing I can say is use the bandit knife. Try to get two or three hits in. Get behind him. Try to dodge him as best as you can. His attacks are not that easy to dodge either. Now he has this one wind up charge slam that's really good to get behind, but we got him pretty easily there. But yeah, the bandit knife with the fire clutch ring and the right eye of pontiff will make short work of him. We're going to switch to the cat ring now because we're going to be doing some drops to get Grey Rat's ashes soon. And we want to go down this area right here. There's one more item here in the corner. I'm going to drop off here. You don't really need these Shriving Stones, to be honest. You really don't need them at all. But uh, we're just picking it up. Now here is an entrance, hidden entrance. You want to hit this, pull this right here. And stop and get out Arbalist. And snipe the little assholes that are hanging up up top. Now, interestingly, if you shoot one and he drops down, he won't... He won't aggro on you. He'll just stand there. So we can just take that opportunity to snipe him again. And we'll get the Scholar Ring here. Now here we're just going to dip our head in wax. I missed a ring. I will get it in the next episode. It's called the Fleshbite Ring and we'll get it next episode, but... You get a better version of it in New Game Plus, but we're going to get it anyway in the next episode, but I missed it. Now it's time to open up a, a rather important shortcut if you're struggling in the archives. Any shortcut that you get an opportunity to open, open it immediately. It is your priority, because there are no bonfires between the beginning of the, of the archives to the end of it. You basically have to treat it just like Cathedral of the Deep where you had to keep opening up a shortcut to get back to the original bonfire. So that's the first one. You want to make sure you open up that door. And now we're going to go kill some more scholars. It's good that you have the head of wax here because we're going to go behind the bookshelves and there's a ton of hands but we'll be invulnerable as long as we have our head dipped in wax. These guys are not a threat. Now they will splooge on you with their wax and it makes you hard to move and you'll see I get splooged, splooged on right here. He just couldn't help himself. You see I'm walking very slow. Make sure to hit this chest here. We'll be coming back to this room later on to complete Orbex quest, quest line and we'll get um, the ability to get a weapon from Uria once we have his ashes. So now we're going to get Grey Rat's Ashes. So you want to come on the rooftops here. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a Titanite Chunk there. It's not worth it. Don't go. It's a trap. A uh, Gargoyle comes and you'll have to deal with it. If you want the Chunk that bad, go ahead. But with the Dragon Chaser's Ashes, you can just buy one if you need one. Not worth the pain. I'm going to drop down here. And you can see our friend. He's lying lifeless, unfortunately. But we get his Ashes. And with these ashes, we'll be able to get the best bolts in the game. Although, we're really not going to use them because they're expensive and you can't carry that many of them. It's, it's really unfortunate. But they are quite powerful, though, especially the exploding ones. We're going to use the shortcut that we opened up to get back to where we were. We got the Scholar's Ring right here. Now, there's a Lothric Knight behind us there but we're not going to deal with him he doesn't give us anything particularly useful now 
Now, we're going to have to fight a lot of gargoyles on the rooftops, and they're quite the pain in the ass. And I recommend using the frayed blade to take them out. But you're going to have to fight two of them at once. And it's, it's just not fun. So we're going to put on the Ring of Steel Protection to just give us a little bit more tanking ability. Because they do hit pretty hard. We're going to be fighting, I believe, four of them. And soon we'll be able to get our last bone shard and estus shard now here's the first one i recommend just letting him do his charge behind cover get behind cover and let him do his charge the, the key to these guys is just get behind them and just wail on them with the frayed blade and when they go up is when they're most dangerous as long as you can dodge their aerial attack and eventually you'll be able to stagger them and do the repost but that's just one of them. You're going to fight two of them in a minute at the same damn time. Now here, I screwed up. Usually I can get both of these crystal lizards with one shot from the frayed blade. I missed terribly here, but usually you can get them both in one shot. But, but the gargoyle is more important now, so we're going to take him out. Again, just try to hit him as many times as you can from the back side. Now here's where we're going to have to fight two of them at the same time. It's and Sometimes you yeah, might have to retreat and just wither their health down a cheap way or whatever. It's just not fun to fight two of these guys at the same time. Now I must say, I did get one stuck one time by dropping down a lower level on the rooftops. But I didn't uh, try it here. I did, was able to separate them. So that might be what the de developers intended. But here I'm just going to find them both at the same time. It's not fun, guys. It's not fun to fight both of these guys at the same time. Try to take them out as fast as you can. But it's going to be a cluster. But Frayed Blade is, is a very good weapon, so make use of it here. Yeah, like I said, their, their aerial attacks are the more dangerous ones. We got them pretty okay, I guess. Now... We're going to get our last undead bone shard right here. But let's take out this scholar first. Now here I kind of forgot where the flesh bite ring was and I did not get it. And I thought it was this way, but then I realized I had already passed it. So... I go down here and activate two thralls for no apparent reason. And I don't even need to dip my head anymore. I don't even know why I did that. But right here, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I didn't need to go this way. So I just activated two thralls for no particular reason. But yeah, I've already passed the ring. But I'll get it next episode. Now here is my least favorite part of the entire uh, area. There's three NPCs here and... They all have different abilities. One's a mage, one's a dex character, one's a strength character. Now, ideally, you want to take out at least one of them pretty quickly. I like to snipe one and just run behind cover here. But they don't cooperate a lot of times. Sometimes they, they just don't. And so you want to make sure you have the fire clutch ring because we're going to use the whip again. But yeah, it, it, this does not go well for me. I, I did not like this the way this fight went. But ideally, you want to be able to take them out. At least one of the guys behind cover here. Usually they'd come, but they just didn't come this time. And it just frustrated me. So you got the guy with the axe. He's got pretty good range on his axe. but And these guys will heal too, but their Estuses are not... <laughs> they don't heal that much. So you can pretty much still take them out. As you can see, it's not like the other ones. Which it feels they have a lot of health. These guys don't have a lot of health, so even if they do heal, it's okay. Now this is where I get frustrated. The guy that has the bow and arrow poison, or yeah, he's got a poison bow and arrow, and he just he usually he's supposed to come at me. The mage never comes behind cover, so I don't really prioritize the mage at first. I want to take out the other guy first, but he just he just did not cooperate, so I had to kind of get into range to get him to chase me. 
Yes, and then now he's on my ass, so I'm going to go behind cover again. And then here we should be okay. Once he, he's aggroed on you, you should be able to take him out with Witch's Locks, no problem. And if he's on the top of the stairs, we can still hit him with Witch's Locks. Eventually they will run out of Estus. He had some invincibility frames there on his charge. Now, each one of these enemies will drop a weapon. Make sure you get them all. I really hate fighting magic users in this game, I swear. We're a melee type character, so we, we have to get in close, usually. Once we start hitting them with Witch's Locks, though, it's pretty much over for them. As it stuns them. And we have great range. Now, the hard part's over, really. All we're going to get now is some, a couple of Titanite slabs. Open up a shortcut. And that's pretty much going to be the episode. We're not going to fight any bosses in this episode. We're just going to get everything ready for next episode where we do our boss blitz run. Nameless King, Twin Princes, and the Soul of Cinder. And we're going to mop up some areas that we didn't explore. We're going to do a few side quests. And that'll be it. And make sure you get this shortcut because it's the more important one. It'll give you quick access back to where you want to go. Now this is the best farming spot in the entire game if you want souls. No doubt about it. This area here, these guys drop so many souls. And there's an easy way to kill them and I'm going to show you. It might take a little while, but the amount of souls you get per guy, and if you use the symbol of Ivorus and all that stuff, if you have it, you'll get even more souls. So it's definitely beneficial to farm this area for souls if you want. So the area forward is the boss. We're going to take a left up these stairs. Now it's very important to have the Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring and the Hornet Ring on for this section because there's three angels that they're real fat and they're easy to backstab, but they have devastating attacks. So what you want to do is run up and just trigger them. Turn around. They won't they won't know you're here. They just they just come down and they're on like a patrol. Two of them remain stationary and one will just loop around the arena. So you'll see we can use this to our advantage. If they're stationary, we just go behind them and backstab them. It only takes two backstabs to kill one of them with the Hornet Ring. With our, with our current setup anyway. So we won't wait for this guy to walk around. We're going to sneak up behind this guy. Backstab him. It's going to take a ton of his health. And we're just going to get behind him and do it again. They're fat and easy to backstab, like I said. Even if they're doing their spell, they're, they're vulnerable to a backstab. So we're not going to get this guy yet. Because the other guy is patrolling around. So we want to wait for him to pass him. And then we'll kill that guy that's stationary. And we'll kill the guy that's patrolling last. So here he is. We're just going to wait for him. He's too close to the other angel. Definitely don't want to aggro both of them at the same time. Or all three at the same time. It's definitely don't want that to happen. So we're going to get behind this guy and backstab him. They have long wind-ups. Like I said, it's it's very easy to get behind him. Now, if he does that spin attack, though, you might want to use the Ring of Steel Protection if you don't have a lot of health. But yeah, after the third kill, we'll get a Titanite Slab. So two of the three are gone. We just got this guy to deal with, and we'll be done. I really love the Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring. It's so fun to use. They just never know you're coming. It's like the Splinter Cell Ring, I like to call it. Stealth Ring. It's just unfortunate it takes so long to get it. See how he's using the spell and we can just get right behind him as he's using it. And we get a, a Titanite Slab. Now we're going to get our last Estus Shard of the, of the game. The last one available. This will take us to plus 15. 
it's just flasks. And our undead bone shard will take us to plus 10. We'll be maxed out fully on health, which is a good thing for the final three bosses. None of them are particularly easy. So we want to make sure we have all our health. Now, once we have the last Estus Shard, we're going to get a couple items. The first being the, uh, I think it's the it's a ring that gives you more dexterity. I can't remember what it's called. The Hunter Ring, I believe. Those three NPCs that we killed, each one of them had one of these rings. The Scholar Ring was for the Mage. The Hunter Ring was for the guy with the katanas and the... The guy with the axe had the night ring, which we got much earlier in the, in the walkthrough in video three. But here is the hunter ring. We're just going to drop off since we still have the cat ring equipped. Not going to hurt anything. Now when we drop down here, we're going to do a 180 and go through this door. And we're going to do some more dropping. We're going to get into this cage-like area. Took me a minute to figure out where the drop-off point was. And we'll get a spell. It's the same spell that that guy was just using, the fat guy, the fat angel. Now, on these rafters, you can be knocked off, so be careful. But we're going to kill one of those slugs that was in the Cathedral of the Deep. There's a blessed gem here. We'll drop down one more time. And this will take us back to the archives. But we're going to get two chests down here. Get a divine blessing in one of these. Now, worthy to note, if you don't like your Indiana Jones hat and you want an alternative, Although I don't think it's a great alternative. The guy that we killed with the katanas has the other Indiana Jones type hat that you can buy from the handmaiden once you kill him. But I still think the Ferris hat is probably the best fit for this build. Now we're going to go get another Titanite slab near the boss arena kind of cryptic to get this one. It's just like the elevator puzzle that Sigurd had in the Undead Settlement. Now I'm not going to be able to get every item. I'm probably going to miss some in the next episode but we're going to go back into a lot of previous areas and we're going to get a lot of the items that we missed. I missed quite a few items because I didn't need it for this build but just for completion's sake, I'm just going to get some of the more interesting ones, I think. So we'll be going back to the Ashes of Ariandel. We'll be going back to a lot of places. The Profane Capital. We're going to try to get the Mimic Hat. Symbol of Avarice. Don't bother fighting any of these enemies. It's just not worth your time. And just go down this elevator. This will take us back into Lothric Castle. But we'll have to trigger another elevator to come down to take us to the slab. There are two remaining slabs after we get this one. We'll be able to buy one from the Handmaiden once we get all of the Souls of Cinder's ashes. Or souls, I should say. And there's one after killing the Nameless King, which we'll get that in the next episode. So we'll have two additional ones. We'll be able to upgrade all of our weapons except for one, which is the light crossbow, which I didn't think was necessary. But if you really wanted to, you could trade the coiled sword fragment to the crows for a slab. But like I've already said, it's priceless. But if you go into New Game Plus, you'll have two fragments, so you won't need one. You can get a slab for free there. Now with our friend Grey Rat Dead, let's go ahead and turn in the ashes that we have. 
We have the Dragon Chaser asses as well. We're going to give to her. And we're going to go to Andre and upgrade a few weapons. We're going to get our two boss weapons that we have. The Rose of Ariandel and the crossbow that we got from Gale. Make sure you get your last Estes Shard there. But the Rose of Ariandel is a very interesting weapon. You hit yourself to buff spells, which we don't have spells, but yeah. And we're going to level up at the Firekeeper, and that will be the episode, guys. One more to go, and this series will be complete. We should be close to getting 30 faith here. We're still going to work on faith because it's still going to benefit us the most. Alright guys, that's it. I'll see you guys in the finale.